Fuck, it'll get you too. Hi, camera. <laughs> That's going straight to YouTube. Okay, now at the top here, we're going to make some lines that are going to be curvy or wavy, however you like to, uh, you know, characterize them. I'm going to leave the ends open because we're going to put something there. You might be able to figure this out, and if you do, good for you. Yes, because I have wild and uncontrollable hair. It's what I always wanted to be, Natalia. I know, but you're actually growing your hair back. Are you going to cut it again now? I don't know. Just wondering. This is all just you. All right. So leave the ends open, and we'll come back to that later. And you can do them different. You don't have to do it exactly the way that I'm doing it. Use your creative imagination. You can do more or less. You can transform it into your own style, should you like. Where is my book? Where did I put it? It was down there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Found it. OK. We'll come back to the face later, too. So come down to the bottom of the U. Oh, are you guys still drawing? OK. I'll give you another, give you another uh, minute there. Or until I hear lots of talking, then I know you're ready. Get out of here, Stevia package. OK, we ready? I'm hearing talking, so that tells me you're probably ready. Erase it and fix it. That's what erasers are for. I can erase when I'm drawing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna practice. Okay, let's go ahead and continue. You can come back up and finish up the uh, whatever this stuff is up here later on. So we're going to make a little neck. Really easy. Just a little neck. Two little lines. Don't make it too wide. You can make it longer if you want. Just don't run out of space. Because I'm going to try to make, I'm going to, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to draw the feet. It's not. It's not that. It is some type of monster. It's not. It's not though a cyclops. It's not whatever this monstrosity is. It's not a sunflower cyclops. It's not the eyeball monster. That's the eyeball monster. It's not a giant lizard face. It's not a pilgrim. It's a weird pilgrim. It's a Gorgon, correct. If you don't know what a Gorgon is, you will by the end of class. Okay, let us continue. So we're gonna we're gonna interpret the myth in our own way and use our own creative imagination. So I'm gonna imagine that she's actually wearing armor. It's a she. Mine's a she, you can make yours a he or be Gorgons are actually female. They're sisters. Yes, that's what the Gorgons do. And then if you come down, you can draw the bottom part of the torso, armor piece, whatever you want to call it there. And you, we'll, you can come back and add details to armor if you want. I can show you some pictures of what Greek armor looked like. Towards the, that's good, yeah. Okay, now 
I'm going to give her a skirt, and this is called a flounced skirt, which means that it has layers. No, it's not. Okay. Most of my videos nowadays that I make, I post them unlisted. It means you can't find them. It's not mean, it's just because I have students speaking on them and I don't want everybody on YouTube to, to be able to listen to the video. That's good. Well, I, I understand that, Natalia, but I have rules that I have to follow too, you know? Mm, yeah? Okay, uh, so now she doesn't have legs, by the way. She has a serpent tail. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a curve that comes down like this. And I'm going to curve off to the left. And then another curve, but I'm going to stop abruptly right there. Because her, she's, she's, she's resting on the belly of her serpent tail. And then it's going to sort of come back around. And I'm going to stop right there because I have to leave space for her arm. And then I can finish the tail up later when I, after I draw her arm going, if it goes any higher up, if it goes any higher up past the back of her arm, which it probably will a little bit. It's going to taper off up there. <coughs> now this book is pretty cool, but it is slightly inaccurate because the Gorgons, if you read the mythology, the way that they're described, they're actually black. But this is how the illustrator of this book drew, drew her drew one of them. Now, I didn't illustrate this book, although I, I do admire the illustrations in this book, but they are supposed to be black. They are supposed to be black. If you read, the, if, you go, if you go by the descriptions in Greek mythology, they are black. Gorgons are black. Yes, yes. I never even heard the word Gorgon. Where do you think the name came from? Do you know, like, like, almost all of the mythological characters that are in Harry Potter, she didn't make any of them up. She didn't, she didn't make up a lot of the spells, too. They're all from ancient medieval magic, alchemy, witchcraft, all that stuff. The mythology is mostly from ancient Greek mythology. All right. Continuing on, let's do her arms. So Medusa actually carries bow and arrows. That's what she has for her uh, equipment. So I'm going to draw her one arm coming down holding her bow because I can make that bow black. And that means that I can overlap the shape of the bow over her body. So I don't have to worry about it being transparent. So I can just go like this and I can overlap. And then I'm going to go off the page here with the other end of the bow. And then the string is going to come down. I'm going to skip over her arm. Practice. All kinds of practice. Looking at things and drawing them. Looking at, looking at books like this. When I was in elementary school your age, I used to go to the library and check out books just like this one. And I would copy the drawings that I liked the best, as best that I could. I'd copy my comic books, I'd copy my baseball cards. Um, I'm gonna uh, like draw a, a monster and name it Mr. Good, good. Mm -hmm. You went crazy, all right. Yes. Who called me? Yes. The hands on my draw on my uh, on the book. Well, I'm going to show you how to draw the hands, but they're just like regular human hands, except for they've got really long fingernails, like needle fingernails. Okay. So now we're going to do our other arm here, same shape, but we're going to make this one go upwards, and. I'm just going to do the open claw deal here. 
Okay, well, you'll catch up. Just the open claw. And you can give her little needle fingernails if you like. I like to make triangle fingernails. And you can finish her tail now that you've done her arm. So however <laughs> you need your tail to go, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Of course, you can copy it exactly like mine if you try. I did. Okay. And then we're going to go and do her face and her hair. Now I have another female character for all the girls in first and second grade to color. They had a mermaid, now they have a gorgon. I don't think it's exactly what they had in mind, but hey, still a female accounts. Hmm? We're not done with, no, we're not on the face yet. Speaking of the face though, oh wait, hold on. A couple of details in the hand. You can draw the thumb muscle. You can draw the uh, the little padding right here on your hands. It's always good to, Natalia asks, how do you draw this way? It's always good to use the real object if you have it at hand. And I just happen to have my hand at hand. So you can always look at your hand. You can position it how you want. That's how you can get shapes for like a fist. If you're pointing, we'll go that far with gestures and no further. All right, let's go to the face. So we're going to give her big snake eyes. So, big. We're going to exaggerate here. In art, it's always good to exaggerate because it makes your work more expressive. If you drew these little tiny eyes, she wouldn't be as fearsome. And then, once you have that, we've got to draw the, the evil brow, the glaring brow that comes down. It makes her look evil. <laughs> She doesn't actually have eyebrows because she has snake skin. I, I see it as more cartoonish. Well, she's got these, you know. Don't look or you're going to turn into stone. Alright, um nose we can come down and give her like a little little nose little scale little scale action on her nose here give her some evil looking wrinkles you think she's ugly there's another character in here that's even worse there's a couple actually that are even worse than her don't show you okay okay I will Okay, fir first of all, look at this guy. Isn't he weird? He's got a giant caved-in head. He's from Africa, South Africa. See, this book is cool because it shows you the region where the myths originate. You know that one? Tokoloshe, I think is how you say it. Tokoloshe. Here's a Japanese demon. This is called an Onai. He's actually pretty cool looking. I might actually draw him today with kindergarten. Look at this. The Sphinx. She's not ugly. They don't, they don't, I don't see any Norse demons. Loki should be in here because technically he's a demon, but. Actually, He's a frost giant, but whatever. They got Bigfoot. That's one of my favorite pages right there. And I like it because they've got the different types over here. Different types of Bigfoot. One I'm actually scared of slightly. It is. It's a gray. They have a couple of different aliens in here, actually. Look at this guy, Mothman. They made a movie about him. Or, or it. Look, here's another alien, Reptoid. Reptoid alien. 
Okay, we gotta finish our drawing first, though. Alright, so the mouth, we're just gonna give her a big, huge, orange smile here. With big fangs, like a snake. And then you can just give her a little bitty, serrated sort of. She's like a snake, basically. Snake body, bat wings, and then I'm gonna give her a snake, a forked snake tongue here. And we'll just color that black. Yeah, she's got a snake tongue. She's like a snake woman with snakes for hair, bat wings. And actually, in the Greek myth, it says that they're covered with black fur, but this one's slightly different. Okay. Okay, let's do the snake faces. So, easiest way to do them is to, like, think of Pac-Man. But, like, longer, right? It's like Pac-Man, but longer. Like, if somebody kind of was put their foot down on top of Pac-Man's head and just kind of push down and he kind of squeezed them. Is that what it's called? I didn't know that. Got a little overlapping here. Jaleesa, you're just full of fun facts. And then you got to give them eyes too. Of course, you can style your serpent heads differently. If you want to get fancy, you can even add some extra that are coming around from behind here. Like she's got, you know, dreadlocks hanging down, but they're not dreadlocks, they're serpent locks. Snake locks, serpent locks, whatever. And, uh, yeah. Give them teeth too. They're hungry, so they gotta eat. Although I always wondered what the serpents that live in her hair actually eat because everything that Medusa looks at turns to stone. So what can they eat? They can't really eat a stone body. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't say. It doesn't say. I'm going to give her some extra wrinkles just for effect here. Well, maybe they don't. Maybe they're magic, which is pretty much what Greek mythology is. It's magic. What's weird is that the... Here's something weird for you to think of. So the Egyptian sphinx is a lion body with a head of a pharaoh. They think it was Pharaoh uh, Khufu. But there really isn't a mention of the Sphinx in any of the Egyptian myths. There's plenty of other animals, but there's not really any mention of a, of a Sphinx. But the Sphinx turns up in Greek mythology. Well, the Sphinx, the Egyptian Sphinx was built before the Egyptians and the Greeks ever started uh, sort of like, you know, crossing over culturally. They did. In fact, the Greeks actually conquered Egypt at one point. Yes, sure can. Yes. Among all the other things that I gotta think about, sure. Are you telling me that it does, or are you asking me? That sounded like a question. I think it can be, but I don't know if it actually is. All right, we gotta we gotta add one more thing. 
So she has a bow, she needs a quiver with arrows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the quiver going across her shoulder here and on her back. And then the arrows, you can just draw the sticks of the arrows sticking out. And then the, the fletching, the feathers at the end of, a, of, a, of an arrow are called fletching, actually. All right, and then the last little detail I'm going to add here is the scaling on the bottom of her belly here. So just, you know, like this, little horizontal lines going back. All right, and if you want to add any more details, you can. Uh, and then if you want to get markers or color pencils, you can color. We have